about a year and a half ago, I think I reviewed a movie called Ghoulies. Didn't think too much of that movie, but it was a lot of fun to talk about it and laugh about how stupid it was. Uh, so this time around, I bring you Ghoulies 2. Yeah, I found this DVD two-pack double f horror feature uh, featuring the original Ghoulies, which I have on VHS, as well as Ghoulies 2, which I have never seen. Okay, well, when it comes to that first movie, there was a lot of problems with that. Uh, first of all, budget, because it's a super cheaply made little rubber puppet monster movie, but uh, there wasn't enough rubber puppets in it. Never mind that the acting was horrible and the storyline was ridiculous. If you're going to give us rubber puppet monsters, come on, man. We need more. So, well, Ghoulies 2 answers that call. And we get a lot more Ghoulies in this one. Or, well, you know, not in sheer numbers of them, but in terms of screen time. The Ghoulies are the stars of this show. You know, none of the actors, which are all kind of bad in here, even come close to being anywhere near as entertaining as the Ghoulies are. And, you know, the puppets look pretty good. Uh, they look just as good as they did in the original. I don't know if these are brand new puppets. Uh, there's a couple in there that look like they've been added to the roster. Of course, you get your little toilet guy, just like on the cover here of the first one. It looks like a reptilian baby. Uh, then you get, like, one that looks kind of like a cat. And he actually meows and stuff and has a knack for shooting guns. Then you get one that looks kind of like a rat, or they call him the Rat Ghoulie or something. And he uh, vomits up green gunk all over people, and uh, he does that a couple times in this movie. Then you get like a flying ghoulie. Looks really weird, and it's supposed to look kind of like a bat. Like, anyway, there's like five or six of them, and they're all really gross and stupid looking. I mean, they're intentionally made to look like disgusting. Like, uh, you know, they're kind of rubbery and slimy and hairy, a lot of them, and basically just kill people. That's what they do. I don't want to get into the story too much of this movie, because uh, there isn't much. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the back of the box here. The demonic toilet-dwelling goblins are back, stowed away in Satan's den. The traveling house of horrors operated by a carnival workers Larry and Uncle Ned. The ghoulies merrily devour the sideshow attraction's patrons until Larry realizes his horror house is for real and tries to flee the scene. Deliciously outrageous special effects and over-the-top antics ratchet up the horrific fun. Well, it's not horrifically fun. Some of the acting is horrifically bad. And uh, it's kind of logically, it's inconsistent. The ghoulies do stow away aboard the trailer that's carrying this... Uh, Satan's Den uh, carnival attraction, which, you know, you've seen those at carn traveling carnivals and stuff like that. It's like, basically, it's a trailer uh, that folds out, and yeah, they're not that big. In this movie, it's like, you go into the attraction, and it's obviously like a movie set, so it's huge, and it's like going inside like an actual haunted mansion or something like that, and it's all furnished and everything, and there's all kinds of stuff in there, and... Uh, you know, they have, they have like a mummy room, they have a Frankenstein room, the electric chair, torture chamber room, and all this stuff. And it's just, like, there's no way that this stuff fits in the one trailer that they showed us. And there's also no way that these ghoulies could stow away aboard there without anybody knowing. Uh, first of all, because they left the door open when they got in there. But yeah, so they set up the attraction at the carnival, and it's infested with ghoulies, and uh, they start killing people, and yeah. Like, I mean, ghoulies have always been kind of meant to rip off gremlins, right? And gremlins are just there to, like, mess with stuff and to cause mischief. And, you know, if people happen to get hurt or killed or whatever, well, hey, that's just gremlins having fun. And you get lots of shots of gremlins having fun. Now, these ghoulies, around the end of the movie, you get to see them having fun in the carnival and kind of, like, destroying things. And But they're straight up murdering people. Okay. It's a horror movie, or it says it's a horror movie, so, okay. I would still call Gremlins a horror movie. You had a little bit of motivation for the Gremlins, right? Like, they just want to multiply and have fun and, you know, go out and do stuff and act like people and go see movies and go to the bar and dance and dress up and all that stuff. 
Um, the ghoulies here, they basically they just pop up out of nowhere, uh, grab a knife and stab people, or they bite people to death. Um, yeah, ghoulies flopping around. And um, I was happy to see more ghoulies this time around. More of them. I mean, uh, there's some funny scenes, like, you know, the one where they're they're at the, like, carnival shooting game or whatever, and then one guy's shooting the other guy, and the other guy's walking back and forth and, you know, trying to dodge the bullets, and the other guy's, like, trying to shoot him in the head. I mean, you know, stuff like that was kind of funny, and, and the ghoulies, like, actually straight up slash somebody's throat with a razor and uh, another guy gets stabbed multiple times a couple people get electrocuted uh, yeah they're they're mean little bastards is what they are but they're in this like house of horrors so people go into the house of horrors thinking that this is all fake and it's all like you know just part of the show and it's like really popular and then people start dying like right in front of them and they're still you know hey man that's really cool and yeah, it, it comes off really stupid. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about the actors in this movie because I've never heard of any of them. I don't even think there's a cameo from like somebody whose name I'd heard before. The guy that played like the carnival owner, the you know um, the money guy. Uh, you know he's in a business suit and he's trying to shut down the carnival or whatever because it's not making enough money or something like that. Uh, he looked kind of familiar, but. I don't care. What did I see him in, like, fucking Weekend at Bernie's 2 or something like that? The other actors, I think, are maybe a little miscast. But just because, like, our male lead in this movie, his name is Larry. I remember that. Uh, he looks to be, like, maybe 25, 26 years old at the, at the most. And his love interest, this female lead, has got to be at least push it 40 and they have so many like unflattering like close-ups of her and stuff when they're talking and they could have shot that better maybe just cast somebody else or maybe think about recasting the male lead uh because it just didn't i didn't buy their romance uh, cause it's, it's really funny. I mean, they try and stick in a scene like they did in Gremlins, you know, when Phoebe Cates, uh, tells a story about her father dressing up as Santa Claus and getting stuck in the chimney and dying. Um, she tells her backstory about, uh, somebody falling off the high wire and now she's afraid of heights and, you know, it ruined her life and she's so sad and depressed and she's telling this to Larry, the, uh, you know, male lead several awkward close-ups later and this ridiculous sounding story um and they're making out right at the end of it and, you know well it's a movie obviously things wouldn't happen like the way that they happen in movies but there's so much of that in there like there's uh, scenes with like molotov cocktails which i don't think they really know how molotov cocktails work uh because they use one uh, to explode the giant ghoulie that appears in the end and that seems like that was ripped off from critters how there's like a giant critter or a human-sized critter in the end of it and in the end of this one there's a giant-sized ghoulie i guess you know six feet tall seven feet tall whatever and they use a molotov cocktail which is still burning they put it inside this like little gorilla suit because they think the the ghoulie wants to eat all the other ghoulies that's how the movie ends uh he ends up eating all the other ghoulies and then they got to get rid of him so they stuff this Molotov cocktail inside this like little gorilla suit or something, or a little monster suit. The ghoulie eats it, and still it's flaming as the ghoulie is eating it, because he's so dumb and it doesn't realize. And he swallows it, and a little bit of smoke's coming out of his mouth, and then he explodes. Like, I don't think that's really how that works, and I don't think that that would still be burning while it's inside the guy. Like... I don't know, I'm no scientist. And the explosion was pretty cool, not gonna lie. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like things like that actually made it a little better because I had more to laugh at and more to, to kind of just like roll my eyes and go, oh my god, I can't believe they made this. So yeah, Ghoulies 2 was better than the first Ghoulies movie. Um, not that much better. But it's more into that territory where it's like so bad it's good because I guess it's, in that case it's actually worse because it's better you know what I mean like there's more on display more to laugh at more to you know not so much boring like oh my god like just tedious scenes like there were in the first one and stuff that had nothing to do with the actual ghoulies themselves 
that just went on and on and on. And this one is all about the ghoulies. Everybody there is just there to react to these ghoulies and get eaten by them, I guess. The original ghoulies, uh, made in 1985, by the way. I do believe I gave that one a C minus, because uh, it was very boring. This one I'm going a C plus, because I wasn't bored. I mean, I was constantly rolling my eyes and laughing out loud at this movie because it's so dumb. Uh, but it wasn't that great, it wasn't that entertaining, but so was C plus, you know. They did the best with the ghoulies that they could at the time, which would have been two years after, uh, so 1987. So I could give ghoulies two what I think is a pretty generous C+. I've watched two Ghoulies movies now and as I said in that previous video I think there's at least two more sequels maybe only one but I know that's at least one I want to see Ghoulies go to college and uh, if anybody out there knows where I can get a copy of that for a reasonable price hook me up I'll, I'll grab that from you or at least give it a watch so it might be a while before I do any more little rubber puppet monster movies, but until then, have a good one everybody.